Hey everybody, Josh Aravi Nerd here with the 5225 pound dry weight J Flight SLX 265 TH. These model numbers just keep getting crazy like that. Um, this is what I call a crossover. I don't consider it a true toy hauler. It's not extra tall, not extra wide. There's going to be some bigger things like some side by sides that may not fit, although. This one is about three inches taller in the ceiling as compared to a lot of, say like compared to a gray wolf or, or a wildwood or something like that. Um, the, uh, the idea here is it's something that's big enough to fit a lot of folks, but maybe not someone who's looking for the, like the big giant extreme size stuff. Like there's a lot of people out there that I think are just looking for something to be able to like tie some kayaks or bikes or e-bikes or dog kennels. You could convert this over to an office. Heck, I've seen people run um, mobile vendor stalls out of the back of one of these things before where they have their own little craft show or something like that. You can do just about anything with these and what I like is that you can do any of that without really modifying the RV in any significant way and potentially screwing up your resale value. Um, there's a couple things on this that I just really love. I love that flip up table um, under the door side window on this one. They give you some extra storage in a few places other manufacturers might not who make some similar things. Um, but you know, they all have their ups and their downs. This has one major malfunction in my book where it, if you watch a lot of my videos, you know I often say, I don't think that's a deal breaker for me. There is one thing on this that it does kind of make me go, Ugh, we'll cover that when we get indoors. I'm gonna try to be fair with you, show you the good with the bad. Uh, if you appreciate things like that, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like our video, and let me know what you think about this one as we go through. I will say, compared to the previous generation, I do think the overall look of it is pretty darn sharp. Now, sometimes on things like this, where they're not extra super tall, although this is taller than some, um, and they're not extra super wide, I call this a crossover. But regardless of what I call it, one of the big questions is what can I put in it? And in this case, from the back of the floor all the way up to the entertainment center there, you have 12 foot nine of uh, loading length available. Now, beyond that, folks, there are just so many individual measurements that you could possibly want on something like this. I can't, if I just started listing out all of them between this cabinet and that one and under here to there to everywhere, green eggs and ham, Sam I am, it would, uh, this would just become even more boring than normal. So if you need extra information, call our team. We'll get out here. We'll get a tape measure. We'll get you pictures. We'll get you whatever you need to make a confident, educated decision. So like most crossover type things here, you know, you've got uh, what is going to be a four to potentially six adult seating space back here. But this comes with a just monstrously sized floating table that you could use here, there, or anywhere. Again, Sam I am green eggs and ham. But one of the little differences here is they went with a set of like jackknife sofas as compared to just like a folding bench platform with completely loose cushions. Now there's advantages both ways. Uh, the Cherokee Grey Wolf series tends to do it the other way as does Wildwood. Catalina tends to do it a little bit more this way. Some people really like the idea that now I have two defined separated sleepers. Some people like the idea that I don't have to wrestle um, with, uh, you know, cushions and, and fight with these things. Some people don't. <laughs> sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. You know, that's why there's all these different RVs. They all have different advantages and disadvantages. And I'd be curious, you know, which way would you prefer it? With the, uh, the loose cushions that you have to store somewhere, like on the master bed in transit? Or do you prefer it like this, with the jackknives that just fold up clean against the wall and bracket in place? Let me know, leave me a comment. Now down here, You've got recessed D-rings on this, which is kind of cool. What's funny is the D-rings say something like 5,000 pound rating. Well, the RV doesn't even, it it's, doesn't even have that for a cargo capacity. So keep in mind, you know, that's uh, probably stupidly overkill. The, the wheel well that we're looking at down here, notice how it's not, well, first of all, it's diamond plated. You can drive on it. Secondly, uh, they, they actually ramped it a little bit so you can drive on it more easily instead of just a hard square thing where a tire might jump and cause you to bump into a cabinet. Now that table doesn't sit there all the time. That actually has three little support beams that pop up. So that is, you know, you can have these sofas set up like a living room. Then you could bring like a couple chairs or stools and you could have a really cool door side dining arrangement. And then that just folds down uh, when you're not using it. Actually, instead of me talking about it, we're in a video, right? Let's take a look. Crazy idea, I know. Now, as long as we have all this open, let's talk cabinetry construction and whatnot. 
Uh, in this class, at this price point, you very often run into a lot of uh, campers that have uh, compressed particle board, cabinet styles and rails, AKA the boxing of the cabinetry, that are stapled in place. And I know that doesn't sound awesome, but I've been doing this for a baker's dozen years now, and, and I really can't tell you uh, a, a whole lot of instances in which the, the stapled fastened cabinets kept everything held together. Now, understand, I'm not trying to sell you on that idea because Jayco doesn't do that. These use pocket screwed cabinet fasteners, which also tends to yield a little bit cleaner fit and finish on the cabinetry as compared to stapled fasteners, where if there's a gap in the cabinet, when you, uh, uh, you know, snap them together, well, it's going to be there till death do you part. So this does have screws into wood in the cabinets. That being said, the cabinet fascia does have a sticker wrap and there is a layer of MDF compressed particle board below that, but inside the cabinet core is wood. That's, that's what lumber core means versus a, a full wood style, as it were. Um, the, uh, the sink over here... <laughs> I call this the splarm sink. It's kind. It's not really a farm sink, but it's it's more of a split sink than a farm sink. But it's not totally like you, you see what I'm saying, right? But that is all sealed edge pressed membrane countertops. Gas electric two way fridge is standard on this, and in a lot of areas in the country, that's probably what you would find. Here in the Midwest, folks really like the 12 volt fridges, so we have it equipped accordingly, which is why we could have these in stock at different Bish's locations with different pricing due to different equipment and different shipping costs. Now, uh, as long as we're looking up top, I wanna, I'm wanna, i gonna do a good news, bad news. So first of all, good news, central air conditioning, excellent lighting, those are good things. Bad news, remember I said there's one thing on this I might personally consider a deal breaker, which is frankly pretty rare for me. Well, uh, we're looking at it. And that is those floor vents. I'm just, to, to me, it seems like a miss putting them in the floor, the garage floor of, whether it's a crossover, but any kind of toy hauler. To me, that is not the place that you want floor vents, where you might be driving over them, where you're running different things in and out of here, where it's far more inclined and more likely to be uh, a dirt catcher. You know what I mean? Um, this is one of the only toy haulers I've ever seen vents in the floor in the garage space. Almost everyone else will put them somewhere in the cabinetry. And that might mean a little loss of storage, but I don't know. To, and, and understand, I'm a person that often jumps up and defends floor vents and says, yes, but they give better heating. This isn't some like Magic Four Seasons camper anyway, so that's not a benefit that we're trying to present here. Um, I, I just, I don't know. Now, I'm kind of stuck on this, obviously. Other people watching this, do you agree with me? Or do you think, like, do you find a benefit to this? And are you like, oh, yes, finally someone gets it. Is there something I'm not seeing or understanding? Sometimes your perspective really helps me put my perspective in perspective. <laughs> so, uh, moving on up here to the bedroom and bathroom. We're kind of angling ourselves more into the bedroom, so we're going to kind of roll along from there. Um, SLX J flights do uh, an interesting thing here because they don't have a full overhead cabinet to act as a dresser. They actually do. Of course, I would only happen to open one of these like an idiot. They do a dresser on one side and then a hanging wardrobe on the other. They kind of split the difference. The idea originally struck me as odd, but it's sort of grown on me over the years. Now, over here in the bedroom wall, that big old sticker is telling you that's where a charge controller could be located because these are roof solar prepped standard. You see the TV hookups and that key block mount that you're looking at right there, there's a matching mount outside. Although personally, I kind of wish it was over here a little further so you could angle it down toward the bed a little bit better. But hey, that's just me. Breeze windows on both sides of the bedroom are nice. Wide open side stands, no USB plugs, but they have some household outlets, which means you can always throw a USB plug converter on there if need be. Although you do need park power or add an inverter to the RV to do that. One of the things here, and this might be a problem child for some folks, is that she is only a camp queen in the SLX series. And I know that that might be a problem for some folks, and I hope you appreciate that I went out of my way to present that to you. You know, if we're willing to, to showcase for you potential disqualifier factors, now, imagine what we'd do for you when we had the opportunity to earn your business, you know? Now, it occurs to me, I'd never really showed that fold up little shelf, uh, you know, kind of little bar dining space off the door side of the RV overlooking that window 
with those stools set up. But as you can see, the stools are included. I do think I actually said you could bring some chairs. You could, but the stools are obviously included. Now, one of the things, I think I alluded to it a few times, but I should have talked about this in the loading space. This is 6'9 tall instead of 6'6, six, six, so my 6'3 head can fit in there uh, more easily. Uh, radius corner shower, at least it's not an angle corner shower, so we are still getting some decent uh, headroom. And I thought, personally, we had some really excellent leg room around this thing. If you're a little bit wider in the hips and the shoulders, I found myself very comfortable in here, but I'm not the biggest, widest dude. I'm just tall and lanky, you know? Now let's talk some road mode. Um, I've just slipped the table under the mattress. It ain't flashy. It ain't fancy, but it is effective. It's a really good way to store that big indoor, outdoor floating table that is smashed into everything. And with the way this one's laid out, I really like how you can walk around the bathroom to get to the bedroom if need be. Now, normally road mode to me means closing up the slides. In this case, I actually want to close up uh, the tailgate and flip those benches up out of the way to kind of give you a better idea of like, how it's gonna look your loading space when you, you come in from the front side, like the way that that, uh, that little folding table folds down. And instead of just asking you to picture it or explaining it, actually showing you. This is also, uh, this is the like the way that Jayco does all these little things that you could say, eh, that doesn't really matter, but little things matter over time, I think. Um, they include these nice little slip covers for the folding benches so that your straps as you're going down the road don't wear and, and cause a little worn spot in your seating. It's just, it's just little things like that. It's the, the death by a thousand paper cuts that they do so well. And I think that that's the kind of stuff that really factors into their double length warranty. I'll, uh, I'll give you three guesses as to the first thing I wanna talk about out here. <laughs> and the first two don't count. That's right, the tinted windows. You guys nailed it. Also, did you know these had a two plus three warranty? Um, I bet you didn't. I bet you had no idea until I said something just now. You had no clue. There's no way you could have, right? Uh, regardless, what I'm getting at here is I'm not really aware of just about anybody else making an RV like this that has that longer warranty period. There's a lot of three-year structural warranties out there, but most of those are still a one-year RV warranty, and Jayco likes to kick things up a little further. Now, uh, I, I like to kind of back up a little bit like that to show you there's good awning space on this But you got to remember the trailer is long enough. It's not a 100% awning coverage thing Although I think it, it this is one of those models It almost feels like it put like a little 10 by 10 easy up screen room back there But then you're kind of blocking the windows. I don't know. Maybe that idea doesn't work out It just it just sort of felt right for a minute. I'll give you another three guesses and again the first two don't count uh, tell me what I think about the location of those outside speakers. I bet some folks already got a pretty good idea of that. Um, let's get into some more detail stuff here and, and less about me. Uh, the, uh, uh, the steps, the stable steps we're looking at, those are not standard. You can get these with the traditional uh, fold-out steps. And I know some folks who really like to get off the beaten path they prefer the fold-out steps or folks who sometimes have their RV in a tight storage area so that, uh, you know, the, the stable steps can sometimes be a little bit of a trick to get married up to the ground properly. Flatland, Michigan, where I'm from, not so much an issue, so you tend to see a lot of them here and on my videos. Did you spot those Goodyear Endurance radials right there? Uh, 80 mile an hour rated, uh, meaning rated for way more speed than you should really be towing one of these for. Please don't go hauling your RV 80 mile an hour unless you are on some of those like, you know, Western or Texas highways where it's got an 80 mile per hour speed limit. That was a uh, interesting thing. Even so, I still don't think I would personally tow that fast. It just, uh, one, here's an interesting factoid for you. Science, when your speed doubles, your wind resistance squares. So it very quickly becomes a serious drag on the RV. Now understand, you take a, a let's say any truck, the moment you break the factory wind signature, even if you put a pop-up behind a three-quarter ton truck, you are very, very quickly and severely negatively affecting your miles per gallon. That's a funny thing that the transport drivers actually kind of told me. They say, you know, if I tow a small trailer, if I tow a big fifth wheel, my miles per gallon doesn't really change that much. It's just kind of one of those things, I suppose, you know. Now, those steps back there, uh, that is something crossover campers like this, like uh, Wildwood, Salem, J-Flight, uh, Catalina. 
very rarely do they include those. Frankly, even bigger true toy haulers uh, include them only rarely themselves. Now, there's certainly some examples out there, and especially once you get into the bigger, higher dollar laminated toy hauler segment, those become more common. But in a trailer like this, you just don't find them every day. But again, it, this is always Jayco. They're always trying to do plus one. They say, all right, you guys got a patio deck, that's fine. I'm gonna give you the puppy saver because these extra little, th where this net is located, these pockets, normally it's nothing there but air. And you're, it just like, if you got a little toddler, you got a small dog, man, it just feels like they could get out of there. Well, having them kind of, having them on lock, you know, it, it's kind of a nice thing. Ooh, you know what? I'm gonna walk you right back up here. So first of all, four corner stabilizer jacks. And as dumb as that sounds to talk about, did you know that even still today, in the world of no slide travel trailers, you still cannot always assume the stabilizer jacks are standard. It's absolutely baffling. And I wanted to get you here in the underbelly because there's an interesting thing. Did you notice how it's a fully skinned belly? First of all, that's something that not everybody does. A lot of brands who advertise an enclosed uh, belly, it's actually only enclosed holding tanks and not a fully enclosed belly. So that's a key detail I like to share. The other thing is because this RV does not have an onboard fuel station, that means the underbelly can be fully enclosed, which uh, RVs with fuel stations, you often can't do things like that. Now the kitchen and the bathroom are all in front of the axles, which means you have one singular sewer outlet one stinky slinky station as it were Ooh, i like that that's what i'm going to start calling that that's the stinky slinky station right there um the uh uh water heater it's gas and electric and auto ignition and fast recharge meaning you can run gas and electric at the same time this will give you just shy of 18 gallons per hour of hot water out of a six gallon vessel which i think is cool black flush outside shower just like the stabilizer jacks that's a stupidly boring thing to talk about but once again, the difference here is that not every RV in this class offer those things either standard, and some don't even offer them as options, so kind of keep that in mind. We are also, you saw the backup camera prep uh, by those loading lights above the garage? We are also prepped and ready for side load lighting, or uh, cameras, I'm an idiot. <sighs> Why do I do this? We are prepped and ready for a side observation camera suite. And this has the J-Smart lighting package. That marker will blink with your left turn signal, but it won't clip the camera out. There's two separate power wires there. And not only do we have a full true pass-through, we have big doors on both sides. So, uh, you know, it, it, you can actually get your hitch head in and out of either side. But you notice there's that chunk of carpet over there. Well, you may also notice how there's a couple little button uh, snaps and those straps right there. That is actually where those steps off the back of the uh, um, patio porch, they lay down and they snap down in place right there. So you don't have to worry about them sliding around, scratching around, digging up stuff, jiggle banging as it were, which is an extremely technical term, uh, mind you. <laughs> oh, ooh, I can't believe I almost forgot to talk about this. Coming off the side, we have ourselves a propane cooker hooker so that you can do some outdoor grilling and chilling. And, and once again, something that really sticks out to me is these steps back here. When you're in this crossover segment, that made up name that I threw out there, kind of like I live around Michiana, the fictitious land between Michigan and Indiana, that blurry line on the map, you know? Um, you just don't usually see those here. Now it is one more thing that you have to store, but if you don't want to mess with it, you just leave them at home. You're building your own adventure in the same way that you used to kind of make your own adventure in the old storybooks. You remember those things? I was always that guy though. I would be like, hmm, I wanna check inside the closet. Then I look like, oh, there's a monster. I'm like flipping back, flipping back, page 58. Okay, nope, not gonna check in the closet, safe. I, uh, <laughs> I was an easily spooked young man. <laughs> Granted, I was only 32 at the time. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, you can always check the link in the video description for pricing and availability. Let me know what you think about her, and folks, we'll see you next time. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and best wishes from Bishes, everyone. Bye.